get started here in just one second. All right, we're joined by Wake Forest head coach Steve Forbes. The Deacons play Tuesday at Duke and host Notre Dame on Saturday. Our first question will be from Josh Graham. Go ahead, Josh. Hey, Steve, I got two quick ones. First, looking back at the last meeting against Duke, given the way you guys held up on the boards and really it looked like on the surface level, aside from that run at the beginning of the second half, held up pretty well against their starters. How do you feel about, are there positives you can draw from that first meeting? Well, you said it. I think, you know, we got whipped in the middle eight. You know, we talk a lot here about winning the middle eight, which is the last four minutes of the first half and the first four minutes of the second half. And we had, I think we had a lead with about a minute and a half to go in the first half. It ended up going down four, I think, at half. And then they came out on a huge run in the second half and the game was over. We're playing from behind the rest of the way. And so um, it's going to be really important that, you know, we can't give up that kind of run at any point in the game, but especially, you know, at the end of the first half going into the second. Um, you know, I mean, I think they're really talented. They're obviously have the, one of the greatest coaches in the history of the game. Um, very impressed with their personnel, but I have been all year long, you know, and but I do think the emergence of uh, – of Griffin has been really a big key for them. Um, about two weeks ago today, it's the first time I've ever told a parent to their face that their child was a problem and they smiled back at me. I was in Atlanta sitting next to the Raptors bench uh, for the Hawks game and I told um, AJ's dad that his son was a problem and he smiled. And so um, it's probably the only time in my life I ever tell a parent to their face that their child is a problem and they think that's a good thing. And Steve, how important of a day on the calendar is Valentine's Day? You don't want to ask that question around here. That's not, it's not a very big day around my house. Of course, I've been married a long time. My wife usually gets a handwritten note on some Wake Forest stationery. Um, you know, like some bunny loves you or something really, really catchy like that. Um, I feel for her on that, but we make it up maybe during the off season. But today, it's about Duke. Okay, our next question is from Connor O'Neill. Go ahead, Connor. You mentioned on Saturday feeling that was the maybe the first time all year that you guys had been out hustled. Um, and you've mentioned on here before that you like fixing things. So yeah. given this is a little bit of uncharted territory for this season, how do you go about fixing that in two days? Well, I mean, I think basically they put us on our heels in the second half and we didn't respond, Connor. And um I mean, the only way to fix it is just not let it happen again, you know, and you talk about it, which we did yesterday. We show film and then we move on and, you know, get ready to play. You have to have a, you know, the best teams have a next play mentality. The next best teams have a next game mentality. And you can't put too much into a win or a loss and you got to keep moving forward. And so, um, you know, we talked about it and then we uh, we showed it to them. And it, listen, we have a mature group. They know. I mean, they weren't in there trying to defend it. They knew what happened. And, um, and then again, listen, they're very conscientious people. It's not like they made the conscientious decision. Hey, let's don't go out here and play hard. Uh, no. I mean, I think more than any, anything is probably what I just said. They got put on their heels and they didn't respond. And that's a credit to Miami. You know, Miami turned defense into offense and um, they, they, they upped their level of urgency. And I just didn't think that for the first time all year that we matched it. And, um, you know, they had 11 points just off what I call atomic bomb turnovers where there's no defense for that, Connor. You know, you just go lay it up or dunk it. It's hard to win that way. You know, you lose eight points at the rim in the first half where we typically are one of the best two-point field goal percentage teams in the country. We didn't make them. And now you're up seven. It's, you're not up 13 or 14. You're up seven. You know, those are things you can't can have in, in, a, in a tight game. And then you have two critical, we only gave up four offensive rebounds, but two of them were critical late, you know? And so eventually if you mess with fire, you get burned. And, and that's what happened in my opinion. And then uh, moving into tomorrow night's game, uh, I know your first game at Cameron was not really much of a game at Cameron. No. Uh, <laughs> your feelings on, on 
going into a full atmosphere there. I mean, it, you know, it's exciting to get to play, you know, one of the best home court advantages in all of college basketball. I mean, I, this is what you look forward to, you know, playing environments like this. And especially when in this year when, you know, this is it. Man, I got Bray looking at me on the video screen. That's not good. Um, you know, um, it's kind of uh, – it's exciting. You know, it's it's going to be really strange next year not to see Coach over there. And so, you know, to have the opportunity for one time to go in there and coach would be, you know, be a, a lifetime experience for me too, you know, as a coach. And so we look forward to it and we embrace the challenge. And our next question is from John Dell. Go ahead, John. Steve, is it easier to fix defense than offense? You've been doing this a while. I mean, what's your take on that? Uh, you know, probably because, you know, defense is positioning and just being in the right spots and being tough enough to carry out the plan. You know, offense is based on skill and, you know, making shots and handling the ball and passing the ball and those things. Some of those things as a coach, you can't, you really just can't control. You know, you, they've got to be able to, to make those kind of plays. And so, um, yeah, probably so. And that's probably why you've seen our team improve so much since the beginning of the years because the defense has gotten a lot better, you know. And now sometimes our offense puts a little bit more pressure on our defense because of the way, you know, we obviously have turned the ball over some. And so um, that, that makes it harder on your defense uh, when you're constantly in, you know, transition that way. So, um, you know, we've just got to be more mindful and a little bit more careful with the ball. And our next question is from Mike Salarte. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Steve, you were just talking about the uh, the opportunity of coaching in Cameron, facing Coach K that one last time, but you're coming off a loss. It's easy to refocus these guys on getting back in the win column and blocking out the, the noise and the crazies yeah. and all those things. I think so. I, you know, um, it was pretty quiet yesterday. Wasn't a lot of chirping going on, and I made sure of that as well. Sometimes when and it's just as much on me as – the players, you, you go through a stretch there where, you, where you're winning, maybe you had a tendency to get a little loose, you know, and um, things are tightened back up now, tension. Now, not that they weren't paying attention before, and you obviously want to win. You don't want to lose. Um, but I think anytime any coach, any team goes, has a loss, you know, a hard one at home like that one was and to a really good team, you know, you get your attention. I mean, that's the thing I – I think people need to understand we lost to a good team. Um, they're very well coached. They got two of the three or two. Or, I think they got one of the best backcourts in the ACC, um, and they played well. They made big they made big plays down the stretch to win the game. And so, you know, no shame in that, but you have to learn from it and, and move on. And so, yeah, I think we obviously had their attention a lot more yesterday. Thanks, Coach. Great, Kevin. And our next question is from David Teal. Go ahead, David. Steve, you mentioned that A.J. Griffin, quote, is a problem, unquote. How much of a problem is Mark Williams on the defensive end? Huge. Uh, great player. One of the most improved players in our league from last year. And I think Roach is, too. He's playing great. Um, you know, Mark is a tremendous rim protector. So when you have that, David, you can put a lot of pressure on the perimeter like they did to us last time, you know, they came out there and said, okay, drive it and beat us off the dribble and, and deal with him at the rim. And you have to play off two feet and you have to shot fake and either you have to score through him or pass or kick it out. And I thought we were too sped up last time. I made a lot of one foot plays, a lot of one foot passes, which are not the way we teach it. And uh, I thought it played to their advantage. And so we'll have to be able to handle the pressure because they're from their guards and they're really defensively, they're really good. They're one of the best teams in the country defensively. And so you got to be able to beat the initial pressure, get in the lane, and then you have to read him and make the right decision. And so uh, he's a difference maker for them on the defensive end of the court. And, and he can be on the offensive end as well. And so I've always been impressed with him. I uh, was last year from our first game to the, our second game, and then watching him play in the AC tournament, and the, it was impressive. And so I'm a big fan of him.
All right, Coach Fords, seeing no other questions and we're out of time, we'll let you go. Best of luck this week. Thanks. I don't have to look at Bray anymore. That's good. <laughs> you can stay on and look at him. Back, baby. <laughs> and the only thing we shared is a birthday. That's about Same it. Same birthday. <laughs> yeah. See you Saturday, babe. I'll see you Saturday. Be safe. Look forward to it, everybody. See you.